Hi. This afternoon story comes from the Maid of the North, and it is called The Monkey's Heart. There once was a small gray monkey who came every day at sunrise to a large tree that grew near the sea. This tree grew so close to the edge of the sea that some of its branches hung out over the water. The tree bore a sweet red fruit, and the monkey swung herself from branch to branch, eating her fill. One day, as the monkey sat eating the red berries, she saw a shark swimming in the sea below her. The shark was watching the monkey with greedy eyes. Hello, friend, called the monkey. Would you like a berry? I was hoping you would ask, said the shark. I would love to have some berries. I am very tired of eating fish. They taste so salty. I don't care much for salty food myself, said the monkey. She pulled off a berry and threw it down to the shark. The first red berry hit the shark on the nose. So the shark rolled over on his back and opened his big jaws. It was quite easy then to throw the berries right into his mouth. Thank you, thank you, cried the shark. I never ate anything that tasted so good. Would you throw down more? The monkey did so. And every morning after that, the shark waited underneath the tree. The monkey picked the red berries and shared them with the shark. You are so kind and generous, said the shark one day. I wish I could do something for you. I can't think of anything, said the monkey. I'm not fond of fish. The shark began to tell the monkey of the wonders of the sea and of all the strange creatures who lived there. He told her of strange, faraway lands one could visit. I could show you many new, interesting things if you'd come with me, said the shark. The monkey was not at all sure she wanted to travel. I would get all wet, she said, and I do hate the water. You wouldn't get wet at all, cried the shark. You could ride on my back quite safely. I will take you to visit the king of my country. In that case, said the monkey, I'd be very glad to go with you. The monkey dropped down from the tree and landed neatly on the shark's back. True to his word, the shark swam off carefully, and the monkey did not get a bit wet. The monkey was delighted with the ride. After they had traveled a few hours, the shark said, Oh, I forgot to tell you. The king of my country is very ill. The only thing that will cure him is a monkey's heart. The monkey sat very still. Then she said lightly, Oh, that is too bad. I'm sorry for your king, but you should have told me this before we started out. It's a small matter, said the shark. I just forgot about it. You see, I have no heart with me, said the monkey. I left it behind. What, what do you mean? You have no heart, cried the shark. Well, monkeys always leave their hearts at home when they travel, she said. Before we set off, I took mine out and hung it on a branch of the berry tree. What a silly thing to do, said the shark crossly. You should not travel without your heart. I'll take it back at once so you can get it. It does seem like a lot of trouble for you, said the monkey. But perhaps you're right. We had better go back for it. 
No trouble at all, said the shark. Turning around, he swam back so fast they were back at the tree in an hour. At once, the monkey caught a low-hanging branch and swung up into the tree. In a moment, she was high and safe among the leaves. Curling herself up, she happily went to sleep. The shark swam round and round under the tree as he waited. At last, he called out loudly, Where are you? The monkey woke up and saw that the shark was still there. I'm up here, taking a nap, she called back. Have you got your heart? It's time we were going. Going where? asked the monkey. We are going to my country with your heart. Have you forgotten? The monkey laughed. You must be crazy. Do you take me for a silly donkey? Don't talk nonsense, said the shark. Come down at once, or we may be too late to save the king's life. I'm not coming down to travel with you, said the monkey. Only a silly donkey would do that twice. The shark thought about that for a moment. Then he said, perhaps a donkey's heart will do, for he was not sure what a donkey was. Where will I find a silly donkey? I can't tell you that, said the monkey, but I can tell you what happened to the washerman's silly donkey. And this is a story that she told. A washerman lived in a small house close to a great forest. With him lived a donkey who carried the man's baskets back and forth to the village nearby. The donkey finally grew bored with this life, so he ran away deep into the woods. There he lived very well on grass and nuts. With nothing to do all day, he grew fatter and fatter. One day, a rabbit, passing by, saw the fat donkey sleeping on a bed of leaves. Farther on, she passed a lion's den. The lion was quite weak and thin, for she had been sick. The rabbit stopped a safe distance away. How are you feeling today? asked the rabbit politely. Much better, answered the lion, but I am still too weak to get up and hunt. There is a nice fat donkey not far from here, said the rabbit. Why tell me that? said the lion crossly. You know I am too weak to go after it, and I'm very hungry. Perhaps I could bring the donkey to you, said the rabbit. Oh, well, if if you could do that, said the lion in surprise, I would be your friend for life. The rabbit hopped back to the donkey. Good morning, said the rabbit. I have some very good news for you. Really, said the donkey. How kind you are. What is this news? My friend, the lion, has heard how handsome and clever and charming you are. She is quite in love with you and would like you to come visit her. The donkey wiggled his ears in pleasure. Where is this lovely lion? She has been very ill. She is still too weak to walk but I can take you to her. The donkey stood up and shook the leaves from his coat. Yes, of course I will come. Such an honor. Why, I suppose that if we marry, I shall be the king of the beasts. The rabbit didn't answer. She laughed to herself as she ran on ahead to lead the donkey to the lion's den. When they arrived, The lion was sitting up, looking pale and thin. I'm so glad to see you, said the lion. Please come in. The rabbit said she had other things to do and hurried away. But the donkey went in to the lion then. Ahem, said the donkey, swishing his tail. 
a rabbit told me you have fallen in love with... He stopped short in surprise and terror. The lion was crouched in the corner and her eyes were blazing. With a loud roar, she leaped at the donkey. The donkey jumped to one side just in time. He gave her a sharp kick in the ribs. The lion rolled over, clawing at the donkey. The donkey bit the lion on the shoulder. Then the lion sprang at him with open jaws. But the donkey rolled over, and with another sharp kick, he knocked the lion across the den. Scrambling to his feet, he ran off into the forest. Two or three weeks passed. The donkey's scars healed, and the lion was now strong and well. One day, the little rabbit stopped a safe distance from the cave and called out, I see you are quite well again. Yes, indeed, said the lion. But you promised me a donkey for my dinner, and all I got was bites and kicks. If I could get hold of that donkey, I'd tear him to pieces. Yes, yes, I did promise you a donkey, said the rabbit. Shall I try to bring him here back to you? If you do, I will be your friend for life, said the lion. The rabbit hurried off. This time the donkey was quite far away, but the hare found him at last, rolling in moss to scratch his back. Good morning, said the rabbit. I see your coat is as handsome as ever. The lion sent me to find you. She would like you to come to see her again. Again? cried the donkey as he stood up. I don't know if I will. Last time she scratched me badly. I was very frightened. She was only trying to kiss you, said the rabbit. But you kicked her and bit her. That made her angry. Oh, I see, said the silly donkey. Are you sure? Lions are like that, said the rabbit. Come along and at least talk to her. So the silly donkey once more followed the rabbit through the forest. This time, the lion sat hidden behind a tree. When the donkey passed, she leaped out and, with a blow of her paw, knocked him dead. Is that the end of the story? asked the shark. That's the end, said the monkey. And the shark swam away, saying to himself, I wish I had found a silly donkey instead of a clever monkey. The end.